Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thanks for the participation on Zoom and thanks everyone here for, for sharing a little bit of what's in your heart. There was a lot of information, even, even from just what's here in this room of this small group of people of things that practice Metta around, right? Kindness and care toward ourselves when we can't let go of something. Maybe I'll, I'll do this one more. So it's been recording but none of this is going to go. So I'm going to do another intro and then that'll be, let's post it out into the world. So welcome to the San Francisco Dharma Collective and specifically spiritual friend Sangha's Mindful Mondays. We're focusing on Metta this evening. So whether it's a cultivation of Metta to oneself because we can't let go of a resentment or for the pain that we feel because there's a resentment there are whatever those layers are that we can touch this idea that i'm supposed to be different i should be different some way that we should on ourselves or we hold ourselves to us up to some unattainable perfection like obviously we have preferences and of course we get caught in, caught in procrastinating And there's all the different kinds of agitation, right? Like, yeah, right? It's like, oh, and I'm human. And can I be kind and gentle with myself? Can I love myself through that and with that? And so we'll practice metta for ourselves. Learning to be with the stuff that's in there, right? Embracing it with tenderness and kindness. And we'll practice metta for those that we care for who are suffering including our moms and our sponsees and this environment, this world that's suffering in so many ways and all these people who are causing suffering in the world against the environment and against other people. We can practice metta for them, helping them to feel better, hoping that maybe if they feel better, they won't be such assholes. They won't be so self-absorbed, right? It can ripple out in all of these ways. And then we can really consciously practice metta for those that we care for who are specifically suffering. We know that they're suffering, right? Someone has a loved one who just died. Someone's having a relapse. Maybe some other things that weren't named. There are these knowings of clearing concrete sufferings that we can care for as well. Mm -hmm. And the practice of metta can be done in lots and lots of ways. And I brought a couple of copies of this book that people can take if they want. But this is a book which is a transcription of a retreat on Metta that Lumpur Pasano offered, I think maybe in 2008. And Ajahn Pasano is a monastic in the lineage of Ajahn Chah. He is an elder. He's probably 70 now. We celebrated his 68th birthday a few years ago, so it's in the 70s. And he's um, he's monastic, so he's celibate, so I don't know if he would identify as straight anymore, but before he became monastic, definitely identifying as straight and cis, white, Canadian. And he went to Thailand and fell in love with the practice and became a monk. He's been a monk for 50 years maybe or something maybe not quite that long but a really long time and I find that he's offered a great bridge for me to be able to be in communication with someone who understands the North American experience particularly the white North American experience in a way that one can only understand it if they've lived it and then he understands the Thai forest tradition and Ajahn Cha in a way that one can only understand it if they live it and I I don't get to be a monk in that tradition right so I need a bridge in and he's been a powerful bridge in for me. And this book, which maybe three of you will take home with you, maybe not as you wish, but this book, he talks about so many different ways to practice metta. In the insight tradition, there's been, I, I, in my experience, a very limited offering of the practice of metta. And what I'll offer this evening is not that far afield from that, but it is a step away from that. And then in this book, there's more and more and more and broader and broader ways that we can practice metta. And maybe we'll explore more of them in the coming months. Or maybe, maybe we'll have a tradition of the last Friday of the month. And in addition to being the time when we go out for a shared meal together, 
that it's a time when we practice metta. I think that having those structures in place are great for Sangha and they're very hard for me to remember and live. So I'll have some support for that. But certainly next Monday, as we will, the first Monday of each month, we'll play with the precepts and the practicing of the precepts. All right. So get kampei, whatever that means for you. One more sip, one more layer, one less layer, one big stretch, a little stretch. Maybe you want to change your posture in a smaller, large way. Standing, walking, seated, lying down. Whatever works for you. Right here, right now. In all the practices, it's helpful to be comfortable. And in the metta practice, maybe even more so. And so beginning by taking an opportunity to do what you need to do or do what you find you can do to help yourself to be more comfortable. And begin by bringing awareness into the body. We're exploring if there are any ways you want to adjust the posture of the body so that it's more comfortable. Finding a relaxed alertness so that we're awake and alert and attentive to ourselves, to the present moment, without straining or striving, without getting tight and stiff, without overdoing it, but putting in some effort. And we're relaxed and at ease. as much as is available without being so relaxed that we're falling asleep. And knowing that we won't have complete ease, that that's okay. We're finding a relaxed, and alert posture. Whether sitting, standing, or lying down. And embracing ourselves as we are. Healing in to the hug of gravity, Mother Earth holding us close. As we rest into the present moment, noticing how the body responds to the bells.
Bringing attention and awareness in to the heart. Noticing whatever might be present there. Constriction, contraction, flow, ease. Allowing it to be as it is. Allowing ourselves to be as we are. And while allowing, also inclining, inclining the heart mind toward ease and peace through this cultivation of love the cultivation of metta. Thich Nhat Hanh translates metta as love. Some teachers offer loving kindness and others loving friendliness. And other teachers might offer other things. But those are the translations my teachers have offered and that I offer to you. And if one of them lands more than the others, take that. And if something else is more supportive, be with that. This is your practice. And the heart-mind be open to the practice of inclining or metta. It's not about arriving there or necessarily feeling love in the body, but an inclining of the heart mind to that state of mind, to the softness and yumminess that's only available when we feel comfortable enough to feel it, when our basic needs are met, when we're actually safe, and then when we feel safe. And we can know that here at the Dharma Collective, we're all here for the same purpose, to find freedom from suffering. And then if we want freedom, we're practicing to do the least harm so that we know that that's part of the field in which we're practicing. And that we have a sentry at the door as well. So perhaps there can be a little bit of feeling of safeness or a little bit of feeling of trust, little comfort, or maybe not being what's truly alive for you. And knowing that all beings deserve To feel okay, to feel safe, to feel love, all beings. And we are among those beings. And we'll begin by inclining the heart mind toward love for ourselves. And for some of us, that will be easy. And for some of us, that will be hard. And it's an exploration. Being with the body in all that arises and passes. And what might arise 
might be the gunk that gets in the way of feeling love for ourselves. Know that that is a clearing out of the pipe, that it's a beneficial experience, even if it is unpleasant. Just exploring this practice, dropping into the body, feeling the heart. And repeating silently to yourself, may I be well. May I be well and noticing what happens in the body, what happens in the heart. As we incline, perhaps we can feel a little tiny bit of wellness. Maybe not. Or maybe there's more than a tiny bit. Whatever is arising is okay. Maybe there's the opposite, or maybe there's resistance. Can we be with the resistance as we practice inclining the heart mind? May I be well. Feeling the body. Feeling the gut, feeling the heart. Rooting down through the feet, the knees, the seats, lifting up through the crown of the head, broadening out through the shoulders. May I be well. May I be happy. What happens when we incline the heart toward happiness? May I be happy. Can we allow ourselves to feel happiness, to experience happiness in our bodies? May I be happy. May I be peaceful. Can we cultivate, can we touch a feeling of peacefulness in the body?
May I be peaceful. For I, like all beings on this earth, am worthy, am deserving of the feeling of peace, the experience of peace. Can we feel peace? Can we cultivate peace in our body? May I be prosperous. May no harm come to me. It's beautiful aspiration and wish for us to not receive harm. May no difficulties come to me. Right, would that we could be free of difficulties. May no difficulties come to me. Resting into the body. May no problems come to me. May I always meet with spiritual success. What's the heart? What's the gut doing, feeling, being? May I always meet with spiritual success. May I have the patience. What's patience feel like in the body? Can you touch it? <clears throat> Courage. Understanding. And determination. May I have the patience, feeling patience as much as is available, touching it, exploring it. Courage, noticing how courage feels in the body inclining the heart, mind, body in the direction of 
courage. Understanding. and determination. To me, and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. And feeling the body, however it might feel in this moment, this broad body as a whole, and bringing to mind someone we care for toward whom love flows easily. Probably an uncomplicated relationship is easiest if you can find one of those. Or maybe a pet or a plant. I've known students who practice with rocks or perhaps the earth as a whole. Someone, some being, some living form toward whom love flows easily. There may be a group of people or a culture or society emerges, that's fine. Just settling into this chosen object and extending metta. May you, you can throw in a name or group of names if that's helpful. Whatever supports your practice right now, may you be well. As you continue to practice being with the body, may you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be prosperous. May you be well. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be prosperous. And being with the body, however it may be, greeting ourselves with as much kindness and tenderness as is available.
as we incline the heart mind toward metta. It might not arise, no problem. It's a practice of cultivation. May no harm come to you. May no difficulty come to you. May no problems come to you. May you always meet the spiritual success. Repeating the words silently to yourself, feeling the body, inclining the heart in these directions that lead toward metta. May you always meet with spiritual success. May you have the patience touching patients in the body, if possible. Courage. Understanding. and determination to meet and overcome Inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. And then calling to mind someone you know, who you think is suffering, who may be suffering, and those of you who have been practicing in the collective and specifically with spiritual friend Sangha, I invite you to call to mind Walt, our Sangha assembly who had surgery today, texted with his wife and the surgery went well and he's in the ICU being cared for and recovering. We can send him we can send Walt and his wife Sharon and others who love and care for him. We can send him Metta. And if you don't know Walt and want to play along, please join us. And if you're feeling more inclined to send Metta directly to one who you know is suffering, by all means, bring them into your heart. There's room for everyone. I'll specifically offer the words and phrases for Walt and take them as they are and repeat them or change the words to work for you. Seeing Walt, if you know him, kind of feeling his presence, his laughter, his voice, his way of being. Perhaps you can recall an interaction that you had with him. 
feeling while it's in your heart. Dear Walt, may you be well. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be prosperous. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. May you always meet with spiritual success. May you have the patience Courage. Understanding. And determination. to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures in life. Healing the body, any amount of ease or peace, any amount of settledness or contentment, Anything that even hints of loving kindness. Can we feel that and share that out? Share that out with the group of people who are collected here this evening. Share that out with everyone who participates in the San Francisco Dharma Collective. Can 
and we share that metta out with all beings. Long, large, medium, short, and small. Beings who are near and far away. Those who walk, crawl, and slither on the earth. And those who hop. And those who live in the soil, the beings who live in the sea, and those who buzz and soar through the air. May all beings, including you and me, including your dear ones and the ones you know who are suffering, including Walt, may we all be well. For all beings are deserving of wellness. May we all be happy. Can you touch wellness? Can you touch happiness in the body? Maybe not, just inclining. May we all be happy and peaceful. May we all be prosperous. May no harm come to us. May no difficulties come to us. May no problems come to us. May we always meet with spiritual success. May we have the patience Courage. Understanding. And determination. to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties, problems, and failures.
Noticing how it feels in the body. Being with the body. As you gradually bring in movement. Where of movement can the movement be infused with metta? Be infused with love, be infused with kindness. Really feeling the movement as much as is possible and experiencing the movement as an act of love, an act of kindness. And allowing the body to move and stretch in all of the ways that feel good. If you've been sitting cross-legged, it can be quite nice to engage in a forward fold. It can be nice from any position, but especially that one. And twists are often wonderful. After a period of stillness. And knowing that whatever happened, whatever that experience was like for you, that it was an act of love, even if it sucked ass, right? Even if it was just super hard and just all this shit came up, like it's an act of love. It's a radical act of love. Mm. Thank you for your practice.